And today I have a real world review to share with you guys of the Tamron 28 to 75 millimeter f2.8 G2 lens. I'm gonna share with you how this lens performs for both photo and video. We have a portrait photo shoot that we're doing today, which I'm really excited to share with you all. First, we're gonna start off with some autofocus tests in stills mode. These autofocus tests are on the Sony a7 III in stills mode. I'm using continuous autofocus with IAF turned on and a wide focus area so we can see the full performance of the lens. I'm also testing it out on the widest end, which is 28 millimeters and the longest end of the lens, 75. As you can see, the on-screen IAF point is not extremely sticky, especially compared to the Tamron 35 to 150, which was released around the same time and I reviewed it last week. However, I still thought this lens did a good job at keeping up with me moving around. While I'll get into more detail with autofocus performance and accuracy later in this video, from my experience of using this lens for portrait photography and with a moving subject, I think the autofocus of this lens did a good job. Moving on to our portrait photo shoot, today's model is Michaela. Lydia has done makeup and Dan is filming the behind the scenes. Okay, so I think if we start with like a cool creative shot where you kind of just like look up and put your hands up in the air, because like I'm shooting from like a down angle. I picked a busy background for our first location with lots of texture and we have easy overcast weather to start off with. This lens is so easy to use for photography and as you can see from these first few photos we're taking, the quality of these images are great. I love the clarity you can see in the final photos and at all the focal lengths my images are nice and sharp. We'll get one like sitting just here on the floors. I love that wall. I have a comparison here around the same focal length between this G2 and the Tamron 35 to 150 to see the difference with sharpness and image quality. Another reason this lens is so easy to use is the size and weight. This Tamron 28 to 75 f2.8 G2 weighs 540 grams, which is a convenient weight for a standard zoom. A lens like 28 to 75 or 24 to 70 is the bread and butter zoom range for so many photographers, whether you shoot portraits or fashion or events or travel. I feel like almost every photographer has or had a zoom lens like this in their camera bag at one point or another. Even me, a mostly prime shooter, I used to have a very heavily used 24 to 70 as well so I like that they kept this lens small and lightweight yeah I'm getting like a nice close-up here because the lighting is so pretty it's very soft just like the Tamron 35 to 150 this G2 also features the USB-C port that you can use for firmware updates and changing the functions of the lens this lens is weatherproof and the USB-C port is as well as I mentioned in my Tamron 35 to 150 review, I love the addition of these USB-C ports on lenses, so you don't have to purchase a separate dock on top of purchasing a lens to make sure your lens is up to date. This G2 also has external zoom and a custom button, which is not on the first version. Oh my God, that's so pretty. Oh, that's cool. I was like, where have I always <laughs> Oh, I love that. I found this amazing, almost Italian looking house that I wanted to shoot against. The lighting in this spot is not perfect as we don't have any natural reflectors in our location to bounce light back to Michaela's face. I do love getting to test lenses for reviews in spots like this as you get to see how they work in less than ideal situations. Listen, do you wanna maybe try, you can try with like your arms crossed here, like if you kind of like hug, cross your arms. The lens was performing the same way as my autofocus test at the beginning of this video. For the most part, it was sticky on Michaela's face with IAF, and if I lost IAF here and there, the wide focus area would still be on her face. Should I swing? Ooh, do you want it? <laughs> I've got a cool framing just here. Like we can get like a cool movement shot if you wanted to like flick your hair around a little bit. 
can even like spin to the side. I actually use this Tamron 28 to 75 G2 and Tamron 35 to 150 on the same day. And I found that the Tamron 35 to 150 had extremely sticky IAF and in general, better autofocus performance compared to this G2. I'll leave my review for that 35 to 150 lens in the description if you haven't watched it yet. However, this G2 is a lot cheaper than the 35 to 150. It still performed well and was very easy to shoot with. I was able to get great shots on the day with ease, as you can see from all these photo samples that I'm showing you throughout the video. I found that I had a high ratio of in-focus photos and I have a little gallery to share with you here with some consecutive close-up shots I took. Most photos are in focus on the iris and there are just a couple here and there that focused on her eyelashes or on the hair covering her eye. And just to be clear, all the photos I'm taking at this photo shoot are with the Sony a7 III. Do you mind sitting just here in the footpath? This location was a little tricky to get good bokeh. I do love the background to foreground separation from this lens. The background looks nice and creamy. I look cool with that arm hugging your other leg. Yeah. I also got some extra shots for us to take a closer look at the bokeh. These photos here were taken on the Sony a7 IV and the bokeh is beautiful and clean. By the way, these photos are available in my sample gallery. So if you wanna download these and other photos taken on this Tamron 28 to 75, go for gold. I'll leave a link in the description to my blog where you can find that. We did have quite bright backlight to work with at our shoot, but this Tamron 28 to 75 G2 has barely any chromatic aberration that I could find. I had to really look for it and I found a tiny amount of purple fringing in this photo here. I also found a teeny tiny amount of green fringing in this backlit shot here. So overall, I think this is great performance for CA. Oh, I love that. The golden hour we had on the day of our photo shoot wasn't strong enough to produce any lens flares. So again, I took some extra photos on another day with my new a7 IV to take a better look at lens flares. Here's a collection of the flares I managed to capture at different focal lengths. I don't mind these lens flares, even though they are borderline a little too colorful for my liking. I do like that they are soft and can be creatively blended into your photo. They don't detract too much attention away in the frame. These shots here are also in my high res download sample gallery. We're gonna take a photo at every single focal length of this lens with myself and Michaela standing in one spot and I'll put them all up side by side for you as always. So we'll start on the widest end, 28 millimeters. In this spot, we have a little bit more bokeh and a little bit more depth with this location. So here I'm gonna take a photo at every focal length again, but this time I'll move around and frame every... <laughs> but this time I'll move around and frame every photo to look the same. Next up, let's see how this lens performs for video. These IAF tests are on the Sony a7S III and we are using continuous autofocus with a wide focus point. I found that the IAF was a lot stickier with the a7S III and as you can see, it's doing a good job at keeping up with me. The focus does slip here and there a very minimal amount while I'm walking towards and away from the camera, but overall, I think the performance here is good. I also tested focus breathing, which is quite minimal. 
And finally, Dan captured some 4K 50p slow-mo shots of Michaela on the A7S III. And I also have to say sorry to Dan because I hogged up all the good golden hour light and by the time I gave him the lens, it was a bit overcast again. So sorry, Dan. Overall, I think this lens is good value for money. I'm working on a comparison video between the Samyang 24-70 f2.8 and this lens as I think they are both great zooms but cater towards different kinds of photographers and each lens has their own set of pros and cons in my opinion. So I'm working on that and I will upload it really soon. For this lens, I really love how light it is but without compromising on photo quality. The final images are sharp with a nice amount of clarity to them. I can see this being a great lens option for someone looking for an easy to use zoom. That is it for today's review of the Tamron 28 to 75 millimeter f2.8. I'd love to know which ones were your favorite photos down in the comments below and what you think of this lens as well. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I'll see you all next time. Bye.